Hello one, hello all, your favorite history teacher is back again. My name's Aaron and this is a brand new series of inspirations behind Stronghold. This series will be looking at Stronghold Crusader 1 and 2 and taking a look at the different stories and general history which inspired these two titles. Now for those of you who have no idea what Inspirations Behind Stronghold is, this is a series I do here on Firefly Studios exclusive to our YouTube channel, where with help from the most senior members of the Firefly development team, most notably our lead designer Simon Bradbury, who's worked on every single Stronghold game, I look at the different history, contexts, uh, siege equipment, units, and general ways of life which inspired our Stronghold titles. Now for our first swoop into the medieval Middle East, I'll be looking at the grand picture, the Crusades themselves, and how this history of bloody conflicts set up the perfect breeding ground for a new Stronghold title. First up, let's get to the facts about what the Crusades actually were. A series of religious wars between mainly the Christians of Europe and the Muslims of the Middle East spanning about 200 years from 1095 to 1272. Although there were, of course, many other factions at play and battling in and around these dates which were linked to the Crusades themselves. Beginning with a foolhardy exploit by the military religious force, the Seljuk Turks, a group who began restricting and attacking Christians who were on pilgrimage to the Holy Land in around 1095. The Holy Land pretty much equated to this, but much more importantly, Jerusalem, a city of obvious religious importance for both the Christians and the Muslims. This angered Pope Urban II and he called together a mighty military force from the often squabbling European kingdoms. They would then march on the Holy Land and retake what the Seljuk Turks now occupied and grant Christians the right to pilgrimage to Jerusalem once more. Fast forward and this would then lead to a total of eight crusades. Some doing well, some not so well depending on your point of view. But the crusade which we really care about in regards to Stronghold is the third crusade. Although we do feature a campaign in the first crusade, but it's mostly the third. Taking place from 1189 to 1192, this featured a whole cast of characters that Stronghold players might recognize. Richard the Lionheart, Saladin, Frederick Barbarossa, King Philip II of France, but more about them in a later episode. This was a time of great conflicts in and around Jerusalem as Richard and Saladin went toe to toe over the great city, but battles spanned all across the Middle East as Acre, Antioch and Jafar saw terrible bloodshed between Christian and Muslim forces. It was also a period in which games hadn't really visited. Even post Crusader you only have a handful of titles which are based or visit the Crusades. Crusader Kings, Assassin's Creed, and Medieval 2 Total War would all touch on the time, but this was Firefly's chance to present this fascinating wartime in a form of a video game. Letting you control Arabian forces for one of the very first times, and allowing you to orchestrate what would have been some of the most vicious barbaric battles and sieges ever to occur in history. So if we look at the grand picture, we've got a magnificent setup for a stronghold game. Medieval times, mighty military armies, castles, characters, and a series of bloody conflicts. But let's start by looking at the landscape for where all of this would take place. The desert itself. So the history of the Crusades supports the stronghold formula. But what about the lands themselves? How would Firefly tackle a completely different rulebook in terms of environment? Here's Simon Bradbury, lead designer on the game, with an explanation. It takes the basic stronghold idea, which is castles, feeding your people, needing wood, stone and iron, but it gives you a different gameplay mechanic because in the desert most of it's sand where you can't grow food. So it allowed the oasis mechanic, which basically meant fighting over control of oasis land. While yes, the Crusades offered a collection of new history for Firefly to sink its early 2000s teeth into, it was the setting's economic nuance which was to provide a whole new way of playing Stronghold. Lords and ladies were now forced into a fast-paced skirmish as hiding in your castle walls was no longer an option. You now had to build quick, resourcefully and efficiently to recruit a battling force to protect your oasis land or conquer others. 
This fell perfectly with Firefly's aims for Crusader, as it was meant to be a more action-orientated spin-off to its atmospheric story-focused counterpart, Stronghold. So now we have the unity of both setting and gameplay, but it's also important to allow players to enjoy an aspect of what the game promises, the Crusader campaigns themselves. As mentioned, these campaigns take place over the First and Third Crusades, with the majority landing in the conquest of Richard Lionheart, Saladin, and Frederick Barbarossa. But before we jump into the many skirmishes between holy European kings and Saladin, we must note that the first historical campaign we invite the player on allows them to play through the beginning of this long-lasting series of conflicts as we lay out the lead-up to the First Crusader Siege of Jerusalem. A Call to Arms chronicles the mostly Frankish forces of the First Crusade as they battle through Heraclea, Antioch, Akkar, and finally besieging Jerusalem in the battle which would establish the Kingdom of Jerusalem. These first escapades are the perfect training ground for beginner stronghold players, and we thought it would be much more engaging to have a player progress through a piece of history while learning the game, rather than just having a boring set of tutorial tasks set in a random spit of desert. Once you've completed this establishing campaign both in regards to the history of the narrative and your skills as a lord or lady of the desert, you may continue on to our further campaigns. These following stories allow the player to assume the role of the previously mentioned Richard Lionheart, Frederick Barbarossa and most notably Saladin. Something we pride the game on is being able to control both sides of the conflict, the Crusaders and the United Muslim forces of Saladin. Throughout these campaigns you travel to Damascus, Aleppo, Tyre and more in an ever ferocious occupation of the Holy Lands. With so many different scenarios available to us throughout this history, with the skirmishes of Hattin, invasions of Cyprus and of course the grand sieges of Acre and Jerusalem, we were able to create a varied and complex mission structure all with different requirements of ability and proficiency. One mission you'll be tasked with producing a heap of provisions to prevent your defending forces from facing the perils of starvation, the next you'll have to pinpoint troop movements in a mighty siege of a famed crusader castle. These campaigns served a double purpose. Firstly it allowed us to inject some of that great medieval history that we knew and loved, especially since we've been learning about this great new side of medieval history. But secondly, due to the mentioned potential in variety, we could make anyone who played them through a capable lord or lady of the desert, now ready to head out into any custom skirmish scenario they or their friends had set up. So that was the first episode into the who's, what's, why's and when's when it comes to the Crusader series and Crusader history itself. Now, if you did enjoy the video and you want to see more, I've already done a whole series on our European games. You can check out the playlist link right there. And as always, if you like the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe here on YouTube for more Stronghold Next, Romans Age of Caesar, and Firefly Studios content every single week. See you next week.